In just a moment, X minus one, but first... A familiar theme that introduces some of the sweetest music this side of heaven, the music of Guy Lombardo and his Royal Canadian. And beginning Monday, July 30th, NBC Bandstand brings you live two full hours of your favorite tunes by Guy Lombardo, Tommy Dorsey, plus wonderful arrangements by Freddie Martin and Wayne King. It's four top bands in person, joined by sparkling personalities like Burt Parks and Johnny Mercer, your Mr. Music. Remember, July 30th for the premiere of NBC Bandstand. And now stay tuned for X-1 on NBC. Countdown for blast off. X-5, 4, 3, 2, X-1, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents X minus one. Tonight, The Stars Are the Sticks by Theodore Sturgeon. They call me Karen. It isn't my real name, but it suits my job. Karen, you may remember, ferried dead souls across the river sticks of Greek mythology. I ferried dead souls from the planet Earth out into the unknown of space. My little satellite station is known as Curbstone. I've been here for 20 years. Yes? Karen? Oh, tween. What is it? There's a ship landing from Earth. Is it the regular shuttle? Yes. Okay, we'll check the candidates as soon as they're in. I'll fill out the reports for you. Thank you. Oh, tween. Yes? Close the door a minute, will you? I want to talk to you. Yes? How long have you been here on Curbstone? Oh, I don't know. I think two years. Approximately. And you've been helping me here in the office for almost a year and a half. Have you thought about going back to Earth? Well, yes, I... I thought about it. And? Well, I couldn't. I'd rather die. I just don't seem to belong there. You'd rather stay here and wait? Yes, Even though you may never become certified for space? One day it will happen. Perhaps. I almost hope it won't. Oh, don't say that. Well, the shuttle should be coming in soon. Maybe this trip there'll be somebody aboard for you. I have a feeling there will be. I suppose I ought to explain a little about Curbstone at this point. We're a stopping point. Well, a jumping-off place would be more accurate. We get people from Earth who, for many reasons, cannot remain there. Some are antisocial, criminals of a sort. Some are misfits, individualists who cannot adjust to the rigid standardization. Some are just different. People who are physically different and who have been ostracized as a result. And a few are poets. Those who have souls too big for the confines of Earth. They come to Curbstone and wait to be certified for space. And it's my job to send them out. They're waiting. How many of the strip? Two men and a woman. One of the men... Yes? Nothing. Oh, I've known you too well to be fooled. Why, you're practically glowing. (laughs) Did you speak to him? No. But you think perhaps he'll be the one to choose you? Well, I think perhaps... The way he looked at me. Oh. He didn't think there was anything funny about me. 
Just look. There is nothing funny about you. Oh, you're trying to be kind. You should know me better. I'm the original Billy Goat Gruff. Oh, I do know you better. You have a kind heart. Enough of that. Ask him to come in. One at a time. I watched her walk to the door, and I thought she was beautiful. She was, but not in a way acceptable to the eugenics department back on Earth. Tween was an albino. She had silver skin and hair and ruby-colored eyes. If I hadn't been such an old fat fool. This way, please. Oh, thank you. This is the senior release officer. He'll check you in. Thank you, miss. Your name, please. Well, don't you know it? No, I'm afraid I... Judd! Good Lord. Hello, friend. <laughs> Judson, after all these years. I understand they call you Karen. Yes. <laughs> oh, good, I'll call you Karen. Well, what in the name of misery brings you to Curbstone? Oh, I'm a candidate. But you, of all people, you had a, a good position and enough money. You didn't get into trouble, did you? Oh, the sort. Of what sort? When I was your student at the university many years ago, you taught me to enjoy my individuality. Huh. I tried to teach my students the same thing. The authorities wouldn't stand for it. I see. So I decided to take my chances in space. Are you aware of the risk? Well, not fully, or I probably wouldn't be here. Well, then let me acquaint you with the procedure here on Curbstone. Look out that window. What do you see? It looks like a spaceship on a launching platform. Exactly. That ship is aimed at the outer galaxies. It has enough fuel to reach its destination and land, but not enough to come back. I see. The people who come here to Curbstone have to be certified before they can take off in one of those ships. Well, how does one go about being certified? There are three requirements. You must pass a physical examination and a mental examination. Uh -huh. And the third? You must find an agreeable partner for the trip. A partner? A partner of the opposite sex who is willing to share her life or death. With you from now until eternity. Well, that could be rather difficult. When the Earth authorities agreed to Operation Curbstone, it was decided that it would be a method of colonizing the outer galaxies with Earth people. Therefore, these ships are built to carry two people. I see. Well, suppose I choose somebody and she doesn't want me. You wait. Suppose, I just suppose, I pass the physical and the mental tests and I even find a partner. Suppose we get into the ship and are launched into space. Uh, what are our chances? Come here. This board shows a light for each ship that is en route in space. There, you see that one? That's a couple named Fort and Mary Ellen. They went out together last week, headed for the Deneb systems. As long as the light shows, they're all right. They haven't been destroyed by radiation or piled up on some asteroid or gotten into a time warp. We know from our years of launching couples here on Curbstone that 46% of them never make it. And of those that make it? We don't know. They have the equipment for survival, of course, but who knows what they'll meet on some strange planet. And still they go out, huh? Still they go out. When do I take the examinations? Well, you can start tomorrow if you like. I'd like to talk over old times with you right now, but I have to check the other two passengers you came up with. Uh, certainly. Now, Tween, would you come in, please? Tween, assist me here. She, too, is waiting to find a partner for the trip. Yes? Now, Tween, this is Judson. Judson's an old friend. He was a student of mine many years ago. I'm very happy to meet you. Yes, I know you are. Uh, Tween, tell the others to come in, please. Yes, sir. A remarkable girl. Remarkable looking, at any rate. Well, uh, Tween will tell you where your quarters are. I hope we'll talk soon. Well, I hope so. Oh, by the way, yeah. that light on the board, uh, Fort and Mary Ellen? What about it? Well, it, it just went out. I was happy to see Judson. My memories of our association were pleasant ones. As he left, the other two passengers came in. The man was young, dark-haired, and slick-looking. His name was Wald. The woman, well, she takes some describing. Her name was Flower. Her voice was like a cello. And her figure was a walking demand for the revival of the now-extinct profession of Peeping Tom. Let me be honest. I didn't like either of them. 
That takes care of your documents. How long will it take us to be certified? Well, that depends. If you pass your tests, it can happen in a week. And suppose we don't pass our tests? You might be here a year, two years. There's no limit. <laughs> you, uh, you can keep taking the tests or you can return to Earth. Earth? Oh. Well, is there anything to do up here? I'm in excitement. That depends on what you consider excitement. Anything we haven't already tried. Isn't that right, Wald? We decided to come up here, Mr... Uh... Call me Karen. Karen. How quaint. Anyway, we decided to come up here because we were bored with the routine on Earth. You're aware of the risk involved? You mean we might not make it? Well, that's life, isn't it? Well, for some. For others, it's death. I don't like that kind of talk. You'll attend an orientation session tomorrow. I'll have my assistant show you to your quarters. Twin. Yes? Come in, Twin. I want you to meet Flower. How do you do? And Wald. Well, Curbstone is exciting already. Something different, darling? Oh, shut up. This is Twin. She'll show you where you live. Oh, a pleasure. A distinct pleasure. There was something decadent about Wald and Flower, something almost reptilian. I couldn't believe that these two would ever step into a ship and risk the trip to space. Of course, I could be wrong. Boredom drives people to risk many things. At the session the next day, I watched my three new arrivals. When it was over, I stood talking to Judson. Well, still want to go out? Yes. Picked out a companion yet? Oh, yes. Really? Well, you haven't met anybody yet. I've met the person I'd like to go with. Mind if I ask who? Your assistant, Tween. <laughs> you don't disappoint me, Judd. I fell in love with her the first time I met her, too. I haven't even <laughs> talked to her yet, except to say hello and where's the commissary, but there's, well, there's a quality about her like, well... I... Like a cool breeze on a hot summer's day. Well, you are smitten. At my age, I can afford to be romantic. Oh, excuse me, am I interrupting? Not at all. Judson, you know, Flower. Yes, we met on the ship coming to Curbstone. I wondered if you were busy. So, me? You. Well, not really, no. Good. Then you can take me down to the recreation room for some methyl caffeine. Well, I don't use it. That doesn't mean you can't take me. Well, you're Mr. Wald. Oh, I mean... Oh, Wald and I are just very good friends. Besides, he's busy right now. He's being shown around the satellite by this gentleman's assistant. Twin? That's her name. The peculiar one. Coming, Judson? I guess so. You excuse us? Certainly. When I saw Tween the next day, there were stars in her eyes. Good morning. Good morning. You're laughing. Am I? Your eyes are. I'm happy. Good. <laughs> I think it won't be long now. Before what? Before I'm certified. Oh? I've met someone who really likes me. I see. Can you guess? No. Who is it? Well, you know the dark-haired young man who came in yesterday with your friend Judson? Wald? Mm-hmm. We went down to the ship together, and he... Well, he asked a lot of questions about it, and, and then we started to talk about us. He says he's wasted his whole life flitting from one diversion to another. Really? Now he says... He's looking for something with some meaning. You like him? Well, he isn't afraid of me. He doesn't see anything wrong with my being different. I thought he was with Flower. Oh, he says he and Flower travel together because of habit. They're both bored and looking for something. Or someone. Well, as long as it makes you happy. He... He kissed me. Do you know that... No man has ever kissed me like that. You enjoyed it? Oh, yes. Did he say anything about going out into space with you? He said he could think of no one he'd rather go with. And uh, when is he going to sign the certification? Well, um, he felt we ought to get to know each other better. For a while, anyway. He's right, don't you think? Yes, I, I think it would be better. Karen. Yes? I love you very much. Why did you say that? Well, because it's true. I mean, 
Well, there's something so kind and understanding about you. Don't let it fool you. Underneath, I am the same as anybody else. No, I don't believe it. Why, they picked you for this job because you... Well, you have such compassion. You could never hate. Could you? I, I don't know. I never have, but... Well, now I don't know. That's because you're in love. You can't love, really, unless you can hate. Oh, I don't believe that. Oh, I just invented it to sound as if I knew the answers. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'll buy you a drink to celebrate the big event. <laughs> I watched her sip the drink, the tones of her skin coming and going with the pulse of her blood. I thought to myself, you're going to be hurt, twin. You're going to be terribly, terribly hurt. And I wondered if perhaps she didn't know it. Well, twin, another couple out into space, Maria and Clint. Will you record it and have another ship brought up to the launcher? Uh, tween. What? Oh, sorry, I, I was thinking of something else. Wald? So it have. How long has it been now? Three months. Long time, huh? Well, I... Well, he wants to be sure. And you? Are you sure? Oh, yes. Nothing to do but wait, then. I have to go over to the hull division. Will you take over? Yes. Sometime I, too, will be speeding through space, and I'll be a tiny light on this board. Hello there. Do you mind if I come in? Oh, not at all. Where's Fatso? Karen? Oh, he isn't that fat. No, he's fat enough. Where is he? He went over to the hull division. Well, this is a nice layout. Would you come to see me or the layout? You know I came to see you. Matter of fact, I wanted to talk to you about something. Well... The party tonight at the rec center. Well, what about it? We're going, aren't we? I can't make it. Was something wrong? I'm meeting somebody else. Oh. Flower. I see. Oh, come on. I don't look so hurt. Flower and I have bummed around together for years. Well, I thought she and Judson... Oh, don't be ridiculous. Well, they spend all their time together. Oh, you don't know Flower. She likes to experience new things. When they get to be old, she tosses them away. All except me. And, and you? Do you like to experience new things and toss them away? Look, I'm sorry, Tween, but uh, it's just the way I am. Like flower. Like flower. We're two of a kind. Would you do me a favor? Why not? Make it a clean break. Don't try to see me again or, or tell me any more lies, even though I want to hear them. Okay. And thanks. Thanks? For these three months, even though they've been make-believe, at least I've had them. Well, I'll, uh, I'll see you around. Yeah, I'll see you around. Hey. Oh, Karen. Karen. Oh, no. Just let him flow. He, he doesn't care about me. He never has. I know. And he's going back to Flower. I know. I saw him leaving. Oh, what'll I do? He's the only one who ever wanted me. No. Not the only one. Now there are two of us. The question that kept going through my mind was, what next? How long was Wall going to hang around Curbstone before he decided to go back to Earth? I couldn't believe he'd have the guts to go out into space. But I had underestimated Flower. Well, well, the prodigal returns. Don't make funny remarks. Uh, tell me, darling, what brings you to my room at this late hour? Could it be that you miss me? Or has little Miss Tween given you the heel? Oh, shut up and give me a drink. <laughs> and don't act so self-righteous. You've been having your fling with this Judson character. My, my. Jealous, too. Oh. I thought you and I agreed a long time ago we'd never make any claims on each other. That was a long time ago. Frankly, I'm getting bored with the satellite. Let's go back to Earth. I'm bored with Earth. Well, we'll go someplace else, then. I am going someplace else. Where? Out. Space. 
Oh, come on now, don't be ridiculous. Oh, I am not being ridiculous. Do you know that only 46% arrive? And if you get there, heaven only knows what kind of monsters or poison atmospheres get you. I know, but there's a certain thrill in the risking. Oh, and when did you start feeling poetic? Since I started talking to Judson. Listen, Flower, don't try to trick me. I know you too well. You're a hundred percent too selfish to risk your pretty skin for some poetic feeling. Well, listen to me. You and I have been together for years. We're very much alike. Now I'm telling you that I intend to go out. I want you to sign my certification and come with me. You're mad. No, no. I think maybe if we get away from everything out there... We'll find each other. Oh. We'll have a chance to love and be decent like ordinary human beings. Oh, well, don't you see? We've been destroying ourselves for years. We're getting older now. Oh, please. Please try to see it. A clean start, a new life, huh? Well? This fella Judson has really been filling your ear, hasn't he? He's a kind person. He doesn't think I'm a... Well, worthless. <laughs> You kill me, girl. Walt, will you come with me? No, no. If you want to wreck yourself, go ahead. And who, pray tell, thinks enough of a cheap character like you to sign her certification? Judson. What? He said he would go out with me. And I intend to go. <laughs> I certified Judson and Flower that same evening. They were going to leave at midnight. I was working late. Come in. Well, Flower, I thought you and Judson... We're not going. At least, I'm not. Oh? Judson decided he didn't want me along. He did? Here. He left this note for me. <laughs> the story of my life. Nice girl, but who wants to marry anybody like that? You see... I'm going alone. Don't try to stop me. It wouldn't work. I'd always look down on you, Judson. It doesn't sound like him. Sounds like every man I've ever known. Except Wald. Wald doesn't judge me. Except Wald? Where's Judson now? Locked in the ship. He's leaving at midnight. Three minutes. Listen, you wait here. Where, where are you going? To see if I can reach that ship before it's too late. <laughs> of my size and age shouldn't run, especially when he has a bad valve in his heart. But I covered the distance of the takeoff ramp like a track star. As I hit the edge of the ramp, I heard Tween's voice screaming at me from the control tower. Karen, look out! You'll burn! Karen! Look out! Karen! I reached the door. Just the rockets were beginning to warm up inside the ship. There wasn't any way to get in except the blast. There's only one way to stop a ship from taking off once the combustion chambers are operating. You have to get the dampening rods into the chambers and stop the chain reaction. It took a lot of beef, but I've got a lot. I looked around the control room of the ship. Judson was strapped into the pilot's chair. The controls were preset for automatic takeoff. I went over to him. He was dead. His head cracked like an eggshell. Judd, I know you can't hear me, but I swear to you, I'll get the one who did this. Really? I have a gun on you. Wald, you're a pig. You're a living human pig. Thanks for the compliment. To take the life of a man whose only act against you was that he wanted to help Flower? I can't afford to lose Flower. Don't you think you've lost her already? Not at all. She thinks Judson is going out into space without her. Oh, I knew he wasn't capable of writing a note like that. It doesn't matter. Just how do you expect to get away with this? Quite easily. Judson isn't going out alone after all. Meaning? He's going to have a companion. You. It won't work, Walt. Once this ship is headed for the stars, there won't be a shred of evidence. Okay. You've got it all figured out. That's right. 
Now turn around. You have the gun. All I've got is this. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Fat men can move amazingly fast, Walt. What are you going to do? Do? Nothing much. I'm just going to certify you, Walt. What? For a flight into space. There are things you can do to a man if you know enough physiology. Pressures on the nerve system that can immobilize him for hours. I did them to Wald. Then I set the controls of the ship again and went out. I was breathing hard. It took me a long time to make it up the steps of the control tower where Tween was waiting. Karen! Oh, Karen, I was so worried. I, I thought you'd be burned. And then when Wall went I'm in... I'm okay. I... Pass, let me sit down a minute. What uh, happened? Nothing much. I had to stop Judson from leaving alone, that's all. But why? Well, Wall decided to leave with him. What? That's right. He finally repented. He, uh, he knew that if he stayed around, he'd just make you unhappy again. And so he asked me to stop Judson until he could join him. You mean he did... Any second now. There go the engines. He had a spark of decency in him after all. I knew it. Yes. In a way, he's a sort of hero. The ship is trembling now. There they go! Maybe she knew. Maybe not. Anyway, she had loved a man, and now she could love another. She came over to me and leaned over and kissed my mouth. Her lips were cool. Then I knew that I could live with the viciousness of what I had done. When you're old and fat as I am, the kiss of a young girl can make you human again. They call me Karen. They forget what it feels like to be denied two worlds instead of one. And they forget something else, too. Karen was more than a boat pilot. He was an executioner. You have just heard X-1 presented by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features a story by Theodore Sturgeon, The Other Man, which tells of the hardest decision a man could face to do his job well and thereby aid his bitterest enemy. Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you The Stars Are the Sticks, a story from the pages of Galaxy written by H.L. Gold and adapted for radio by Ernest Kenoy. Featured in the cast were Craig McDonald, Patsy O'Shea, Dick Hamilton, Charlotte Manson, and Bob Hastings. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Bob Maurer and is an NBC Radio Network production. The music of Freddie Martin...